Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Praise him. I'm glad I'm not in the hospital tonight. I'm glad I'm in Liberty Hall. Praise the Lord. I, I think right now, probably some people are in... Um, no, you, you can't just know some people in an ambulance are rushed to the hospital now. Barely can breathe. But we are here tonight to lift up the name of Jesus and to exalt his name because he's worthy to be praised. If you check from this morning till now, there's a lot of people that died. And I want to hold it for them named Barry. But thanks be to God, we are alive and well. So we are going to give God praise tonight. Amen. Somebody praise him. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. And you alone, oh my heart, desire and I long to worship you. And as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. Alone, all my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. And as a deer panted for the water, so my soul. And I long to worship you. Can I do that one more time? Said as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after you. And I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone does my spirit. I long to 
lift your hand and give God praise. He's worthy. There's a song that I love. Praise thy faithfulness. Oh God. I'm turning with you. Hallelujah. Thou changes thy compassion. Thy faithfulness, oh God, come on, worship Him. Oh, there is no shadow of turning, turning with you. Thou Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, you persist. As I journey to this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the streets of love. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through Him I must win. Oh, I want to see Him. To look upon his face, let us sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. He is our past, oh my last, ever to return. Oh, I want to see to look upon his face. Oh my last, and 
look upon his face to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice tears are past oh my Jesus! 
lift up our hands, everyone. Give glory to God. Hallelujah. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. Can we pray at this time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hold across the aisles? Hold hands across the aisles. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to lift this service into the hands of the Lord. And we're going to ask for the outpouring and the downpouring of the Holy Spirit and the latter rain and the former rain all together upon us tonight. Let's pray together in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we come before your throne tonight. We come before you, O oh God. We lift our service tonight into your hands, O oh God. We are asking, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, O oh God, will take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that will be done here tonight. Father, we lift before you, O God. We pray, Father, for the utterance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for a move of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift everything on the agenda tonight into your hands. We pray that it shall be directed by your Spirit, O God. Holy Spirit of God, take control right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The praise, the worship, the glorification, oh God, the preaching of the word of God. Tonight we lift into your hands, oh God, that some soul will be delivered, some soul will be set free, some soul will be released from the bondage of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come against every forces of darkness. We come against every power of the adversary. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we arrest every spirit, every agent, every demonic spirit, every demonic powers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray that the Holy Ghost will take absolute control tonight. Have your way in our midst tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, at the end of it all, oh God, we shall be careful to give you the glory that belongs to you, oh God. I pray that some soul will receive the Lord. I pray that some soul will be baptized in the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Have your way tonight, oh God. Have your way tonight, oh God. Have your way tonight, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let the church shout, Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. Praise God. Tonight, we honor the presence of the Lord who is already in charge. Praise God. Our scripture tonight is from Joel chapter 2, verses 23 to 29. Praise the name of the Lord. When you find it, say amen. This is Joel chapter 2, verses 23 to 29. And it begins thus. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given the farmer rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And he shall know that I am the midst, in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God. And none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, 29 and ending, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out 
my spirit. Here ends the word, the reading of the God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Everyone, shall we bless the name of the Lord Jesus? It's an honor and a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. I am here to bring your welcome and announcements. You may be seated. I acknowledge the Holy Spirit who is evident among us and head of our lives. Greetings to our bishop. In his absence, not seeing him at the moment. Our first lady, Sister Seraphine Clark. Our associate pastor, Minister Joel Clark, his wife. Our choir stars, musicians, technicians, ushers, online viewers, our special guests, our um, local guests, and our visiting overseas visitors. Welcome, I accept greetings in Jesus' name. I'm also here to welcome Sister Winston Beckford, who is here visiting back with us, Sister Rose Prince. God bless you and welcome our choir, our churches, local churches, Georgetown New Testament. Are you here? God bless you. We also have a list of other local churches and overseas. True Tabernacle UPC. Amen. Faith Emmanuel. Church of Jesus Christ. Visionaries, Apostolic Missionaries, Ministries, Waterloo Apostolic, Gates of Praise, UPC, Bethel Tabernacle, Amen. Newton Shiloh Apostolic Church, International Apostolic Ministries, Knoxwood Apostolic Church, Jesus Christ Apostolic, Victory Family Worship Center, ORAC, Calvary Apostolic, Gospel Light Church of God in Jesus Christ, Heaven's Gate Chapel UPC, Remnants Ecclesia Apostolic, Beulah Apostolic, Pen Beulah Pentecostal Temple, Light in the Valley, Gale UPC, Apostolic Arts, Bethlehem UPC, Straight Gate Church of Jesus Christ, All Nations Brock Delegate, is there anyone from the West Bay Ministry? Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome one and all. We are here also to welcome Reverend Douglas Kleinden, Director, National Evangelist Ministry, NAM Division, UPCI USA. Tonight, we also have Minister Dwight Castle. We have a host of superintendents, bishops, pastors, and delegates from many different churches across the world that have joined us for this joyous occasion. We also have our visitors from Cuba, our Spanish-speaking country. God bless you. Tomorrow completes the final leg of convention 2023, and we begin with morning meditation at 8 a.m. Today we had our cups filled with the word from the respective speakers. It was such, such a blessing. Amen. Tomorrow is expected to be no different. Throughout our day sessions, we will have Reverend Derek Hanna, Reverend Robert Coates, Reverend, Reverend Scott Gwynn, Reverend Howard Francis, and our very own Reverend Dalbert Clark to finish off our day session from 1 to 3 p.m. 
we will have a panel discussion branded the church and the internet. Please observe your magazines um, for the time for breakfast, coffee break, and dinner is also noted in your magazines. Evening worship starts at 7.30 p.m. Tomorrow is Holy Ghost Rally. Tomorrow is Holy Ghost Rally. And you can't afford to miss it. As our bishop would say, expectancy is the breathing ground for miracles. Come expecting the unexpected. Amen. God bless you all. Enjoy the remaining of the night service. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Can we stand for a change? Come on, put your hands together for this great God that we serve. Isn't God a good God? Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm happy to see you tonight. Come on, say it with emphasis. Neighbor, my good neighbor, I'm delighted to see you tonight. Clap your hands for your neighbor. God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. Can we wave our hands in the sanctuary? Tonight we are here for another blessing from the Lord. Yes, we just want to give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Because he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. There is no God like our king. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. At this time, I'm going to invite Sister Diane to come. And she's going to do a rendition. Put your hands together for her in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Just worship the Lord, everybody. Come on and lift your hands and worship the Lord, everybody. God is indeed a good God, and we're here to worship tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When I'm alone in the spirit, I can lonely.
of praise that we are going to give unto our king. Just say to your neighbor, neighbor, my good neighbor, just excuse me, let me praise my God. I know we are good friends, but just give me a minute now. It's just my turn to give glory unto the king of kings. All right. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallel
victory. Let me behave myself. Be the help of God in here tonight. We got victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. We got the victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands for the Lord. Amen. 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 We are going into the next segment of our worship. And this is, you may be seated, in our tithes and offering. Bishop August. Okay, sir. Put your hands together from Bishop Agri Scott at this time. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God. Sir, you taught me something last night. When I, when I went home, I tried to check my wallet to see if I had really left those Jamaican dollars that buy customs. But guess what? I didn't have it. So teach me something else tonight again. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend. Can we put our hands together for our mighty God? Come on, praise him like you know he is your God. Somebody give the Lord a hallelujah praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are gathered in this space. Praise God, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, I believe in God. Let me see those who believe in God. There was a time of famine once where the prophet Elisha, I believe, came to the house of a woman and she had one meal left yeah. one and she was prepared to eat that meal and die with her child but the prophet gave her a word from God and the word from God was a multiplicative word it was a word that was meant to create an everlasting flow if you will in that woman's life but it required an act of faith from her. She had to give technically everything. This was, okay, this was an existential offering. In other words, she was giving her life. So one meal and die or no meal and live. Tonight, we have an incredible desire. And I believe, as I did last night, I still do believe, money is in the house. Oh. There is money in the house. And we are going to bless the Lord sacrificially tonight. Let me see those who believe in sacrificial giving. Come on, raise up those hands. I know you do believe it. When you need your rent to be paid and you don't have a dollar, you believe. Your faith gets traction Amen, in the middle of the situation. But tonight we have an August convocation and we have expenses to defer. Amen. And so last night I had the unmitigated goal to ask 200 people for $200. And I don't think I got 100. But that doesn't turn me off. Tonight we are taking it up by the order of five. So I'm looking for the brave folks who are willing seriously to step out and give God your last meal tonight. And we are starting with $1,000. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Let me see those who still believe. <laughs> You're with me, right? You still believe. All right? I'm serious. I have... $1,000 here, and I have another $500, and I hope tonight the card machine people are prestidigitous. I hope they are here. They are here? Don't they stop? Where are they? No, no, no. Until I see them, they are not here. Card, card machine? This is 1000 beloved. It's two. Oh, it's 100 it's a tithing on the thousand. Praise God. Let's put the, our hands together for this. Praise God. This is from today's challenge. 
Amen. We had a $100 challenge today. Let me see all those who were here today. And let me see those who are willing to obey who were here today. All right. So you're going to come and stand in weakness up here as the 10th. But we are looking for some more folks, very seriously, to tithe into this ministry. Uh, we learned today of the work of CSI. And I'm not talking CSI Miami. I'm talking about CSI UPC, okay? Where they are going out and they are giving of substance to people who are in need. This church is a giver unto missions, to missionaries, into the field of heaven and of God. And so tonight, we want to receive some serious offering. God bless you, sir. Amen. This is a testament in Jesus' name. So I'm looking some for some folks to stand up right now and come up here with a thousand dollars. Praise the Lord and bless the house of the Lord. Let's go. A thousand. Who, who is going to be the first brave soul? We had one last night. We need quite a few tonight. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Choir, you're going to be with me tonight, or? Yeah? I have got support. I believe God. Somebody get up and bless God. God has prospered you. You know you just got that deal for 150,000 CI, and God is testing you tonight. Come on, get up and give that $1,000. I see my brother bouncing up here, amen, in his nice yellow shirt. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Rev. Woo, this looks nice. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I believe. I need an assistant here. I believe this is a thousand dollars. I'm believing God that it is. Can we have another soul? We take American, praise God, and we take Canadian and we take hallelujah, amen. Oh, what else? Uh, Euros. We take, amen, digital coins too, praise God, amen. We do. We take all numbers of numerations. Virgin, please don't let me stand up here and appear to beg you. I'm not going to beg you. You cannot outgive God, and some of you have been touched by God to bless this convocation in a very very positive way how who else is going to come up and just bless the lord one thousand dollars i see my sister bouncing up she's coming hallelujah she says no she's making a stage left hallelujah come on seriously uh, two people can put together and make a thousand dollars quickly in the name of jesus the other day we were in jamaica and we needed 1.5 million Jamaican dollars, hallelujah, which is around 10,000 American dollars to buy some AC units for a building that we needed to use for our convocation exercise. And Dr. Corley, amen, we believed that we could get the money from a congregation of around 250 people. And in less than 10 minutes, we had the 1.5 million. So let me translate for you. We had 10,000 American dollars in Jamaica in less than 10 minutes. I'm in the Grand Cayman Islands and I do believe that God has blessed you. Hallelujah and highly favored you. Those that are willing to step out, if you have been given and given and you're saying, boy, Bishop, boy, it's strenuous on us, you know. We have been giving and giving and giving. Well, the Lord says this is the opportunity to double it up. Praise God. So we're going to step out on faith and we're going to do it one more time. I'm going to do this one more time. Who else in here tonight? who is led and able to give unto the kingdom of God $1,000. I'm asking you to come. I see the sisters coming, hallelujah, with the card machine. You see, since they are so late, I should have them test the machine. Hallelujah. With $1,000 each, amen. Amen. They are just arriving, amen. Who, who is willing to step out with me on that faith, on that level of faith in the name of Jesus? Okay, let's go to 500, quickly. $500, uh, 20, uh, 30 people should be, come. this is a thousand man of God. Hallelujah, amen. This is a 50, amen. By faith, he's given by faith, amen. Nobody's going to change my faith. I believe the money is here. I just believe we are stubborn, you know, praise God. You want somebody to, to excise it out of you and dig it out of you. There is room in the house of God for blessings. Proportionate to your giving will be your blessing. Is this a thousand? I'm believing God so deeply. Woo! This is 500. Hallelujah. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Somebody else. 500, 500, 500. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. I wish I was in Jamaica right now. Amen. 
Maybe in 30 minutes we would have satisfied it. Thank you, beloved. Whoa, this is 500 again. Praise the Lord. More, more, more. Come on, come on. Some of you, amen, you, you drive a Tesla. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Come and give God a Tesla-level offering in the name of Jesus. Come. In the name of musicians, we, we, we represent two, you know. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, praise God. We have the card machine. Amen. Next year, this time, amen, you must be blessed and highly favored. The musicians jump up with 2,000 and say, Bishop, sit here. Hallelujah. Maybe we are starting too low. Are you so blessed that you can give us 5,000 and then say, Bishop, just hold off the service? In Jesus' name, $500. I'm serious. I don't want to begin to testify as to the goodness of God and the multiplication of God. We know he's able to do it. Dr. Corley cursed the spirit of poverty. And I believe that it is true and it is so. And that God has given us enough money to step out here and be of a good help to this uh, convocation. It is extremely expensive. Praise God. COVID has seen to that around a 17 to 25 percent increase. Uh, uh, some of the specialists tell me across goods and services uh, everywhere in the world. But our God is able to provide. While Egypt was on ration, Goshen was an ample. So when Egypt was being rationed it in Goshen, they had ample, they had more than enough. So I believe that God has blessed us. Let me see uh, two more people with $500. Let's run up here in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Amen. Anybody, anybody? Jesus. The hallelujah God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. This is a hundred. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, mom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Woo! My God, this looks good in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe God. All right, so since you were just waiting for this time now, can all of you people around, a thousand of you, just run up here with a hundred dollars or more? Can we come right now? We are going to take the card machine. Card machiners, could one of you stand there and one of you stand over there? Amen. We are expecting a flood tonight. A hundred dollars. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, this is British. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Come, come, come. A hundred dollars. We've got it. Those of us today that are stepping out by faith and you the person that got the deal for 150,000 CI you better come up tonight amen Jesus is going to read your business your sister your sister sent it hallelujah sister Andrew Dangers hallelujah amen come 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 in the name of Jesus I'm receiving it now amen thank you thank you gracias amen gracias thank you 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 Thank you, Lady Cheryl. Amen. Come, 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 come. I, I, hallelujah. Come, here. hundred. Come, come, please, Bridget. Let's get into it. Hallelujah. We are going to bind the devil with our money. In the name of Jesus, we're rebuking poverty. This is a promissory note. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, God bless you, Mother. There is a church, amen, that needs 15 million. What kind of dollars is this? Um, Canadian? I don't know. Point Hill Church of Jesus Christ? Um, is this in Jamaica? And they are pledging 1,000? Go Jamaica, go! Go Jamaica! Come, brethren, the hundred dollars. Come, 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 let's go. We have to do this. Come on, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Look at the person beside you in your aisle and say, let us make up a hundred, each aisle, in the name of Jesus. Quickly, let's do it. Let's see how many we can do in Jesus' name. I'm serious. Amen. You got to believe God. This young lady uh, just testified in our church a couple weeks ago. She went, she desired to go to college and she did not have any money. And the, the, the fees are significant. And so she started with student loan. Right? And borrowed close to 400,000 Jamaican dollars for the first term. But we were talking in church about giving unto the Lord and being sacrificial. And she stretched out her faith and believed God that she's not going to borrow any more money to go through school. 
And I remember we instructed her, I instructed her, I was given an illustration, I told them to write the amount of money you are to pay for your tuition, go to the bank, get one of the payment lodgement slips, write up the amount and walk up to the teller an act of faith and tell the teller, just put a stamp on it, okay? Just put the stamp on it as if though I have paid my money. This sister was crazy enough to do it. And at the end of four years of college, she testified she never paid one more tuition using student loan. And she is debt free with the exception of that first semester. And she's graduating at the top of her class and is in, you know, the creme de la creme folk. Amen. There is a multitude of testimonies as to what God can do when you step out with sacrificial giving. I know this from experience. And I know that anytime God asks of something, he requires requires it and he has a blessing in store praise the lord can we all stand now in the name of jesus and what you have purposed in your heart i know some of you are shy and you don't want anybody to see that you're giving 500 praise the lord because they might come to you after church and ask you to buy something amen so you are going to come in this wise thank you very much and you're going to bless the lord in the name of jesus i'm going to ask you to lift up your offering let it be something that you're going to feel hallelujah before you leave here and we are going to bless it in the name of Jesus heavenly father we thank you for those that have already given we thank you for those whose heart you're moving on oh God almighty to make sure that your house's business is satisfied we pray in the name of Jesus that your blessings will abound and will multiply and for those whom you have already blessed but their faith is not yet there I pray you open up their hearts to give unto your kingdom hallelujah with liberality and with joy in the name of Jesus. Let this money be multiplied and even those that are online who are willing to give Lord Jesus, let them so do with joy in your precious name I pray and say thanks in Jesus name and can we just give the Lord thanks right now amen and bless the Lord with joy put back the smile on your face and get a hallelujah in your soul and let God be glorified. At this time the singers of Zion are going to glorify God and praise his wonderful name and you can still bring amen your substance in Jesus name so I'm asking you to come up with attitude uh, well no the, the ushers are going to come to you so give your giving with a joyous and a very happy attitude in Jesus name God bless you bless you sir bless the Lord Jesus praise Jesus Tonight, we are in for a treat. Thank you. Tonight, we have one of our neighboring churches that is in our midst tonight. And they're going to bless our soul with an item. I now invite the New Testament singers in Jesus' name. Clap them while they come. Thank you, sir. says just amen I've seen some 
valleys I walk through the darkness Way there through rivers of breeze Oh, the inner me told me I was forsaken No one was fighting for me I didn't make it as far in my home Often my strength is all gone The hands of the Savior keep holding me up His promise of help in my heart
stand of victory. That's what they sang earlier, right? Then sing it with us. If my God is with you, you got the victory. Is it sometime? Every time. together for them. When we see men of God standing in the house of the Lord singing for God, it's a blessing. So many of us as men, we are doing other things than serving the Lord. Can we all stand? Remain standing by way of quick announcement. There's a red Suzuki Swift license plate number 216. 954. I repeat, Red Suzuki Swift. License number 216 954. Your lights are on. Without further ado, I will now hand over the rest of the service to our host pastor and bishop, Bishop Albert Clark, in care of the Holy Ghost. Put your hands together for the man of God. Why not just stretch your hands across if they are loaded with blood the blood of Jesus and faith and that he'll stretch them across and hold on to your brothers your sisters as we get our minds and our hearts A little higher lifted up out of our soul out of our flesh out of our carnal nature out of our organization or religion and denomination lifted in the spirit realm we can feel the supernatural God his glory fill this room squeeze the hands you're holding and get rid of your flesh look at your neighbor and tell him this is not a flesh gathering this is a spirit gathering come on talk to somebody take off your religious face and put it in your pocket and just look somebody straight in the eyes and tell him this is hallelujah holy ground Come on, squeeze the hands you're holding. Repent for yourself and repent for that person. You know, I heard somebody said the other day that in Hollywood, in Hollywood, somebody say Hollywood. If Hollywood should go to the churches, they wouldn't have to train their people. Let's take the church people and put them in Hollywood. We know how to act. Amen. Praise God. But I want some real people who have felt real attack from real demons. To look at somebody as you hold their hands and say the blood of Jesus. Fight for you tonight. Fight off your adversaries tonight. Fight off your foes and your cancer. Somebody say, Blood of Jesus. No sickness, no cancer, no COVID, no monkeypox, no dog pox, no blood of Jesus. Open your mouth from the balcony to the choir. Hallelujah. He's in the room, he's in the room, he's in the room. Is in the room. He's with us. 
is with us. Open your mouth and shout, he's with us. Open your mouth and shout, he's with us. Just say, Lord, I repent tonight for myself, my children, my leaders, politically and religious. I repent for the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, the United States, for all mankind. Shake somebody's hands and tell them you're covered by the blood and sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tell them you're covered by the blood. Covered by the blood. Hallelujah. It's good to be in convention. Convention 2023. Amen. In the presence of God's wonderful people. Put your hands together for our moderator tonight. Amen. Sister Clark, my wife, amen, and myself, and the ministerial body. Amen. I'm hearing you in the house, engineers, sharpen the monitor, the monitor, the speaker will be coming shortly. Praise the name of the Lord, you're doing a good job. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're so delighted to have you coming in tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. And I came in a little bit late, but while I was listening to the radio, voice 97.7, I heard the moderator on the floor naming the various churches that are here praise god so i don't think i need to do that again am i right praise god but i'm overjoyed crack the organ very low crack the organ very low don't cut the worship praise the lord hallelujah we had a wonderful time from sunday until last night today and tonight amen praise god and tomorrow 8 30 sharp we'll be back here and running up right back up to midnight praise the lord i wonder why when we come to church as pentecostal and apostolic we are looking at like this and you go to the dance even four in the morning you hear the shoes and the tile no tea no tea no coffee tea hunt somebody and tell them worship the devil shouldn't get more worship than God Almighty. Hallelujah. And so I'm very happy to be here. Amen tonight. Before we get the speaker on the floor, I wouldn't sit without even making mention of one of the names of the generals that are in the house. Amen. Bishop Arthur Thomas out of the United States and the ORAC team. Put your hands together. Amen. Bishop McCoy, Ogart McCoy, National Superintendent of the Island of Jamaica. He's in the house with his Assistant National Superintendent, Bishop, uh, Bishop Francis. Pastor Francis, amen, connected tightly to that leadership team amen out of the united states we have an evangelist who is an international evangelist he could hardly get here when we call him evangelist douglas klein Dins. praise god hallelujah praise god praise god I, I love to see him in the holy ghost rally i saw him in ethiopia in the holy ghost rally amen where we had over 164,000 adults fill in one service and 35,000 children over on the other side. That's more than the population of Cayman Islands. One service is here. Praise God. You might hear him tonight. Minister of Finance, Bishop Augur Scott. Bishop of the organization over there in Jamaica, Waterloo. Apostolic Minister Bishop Evans. Successor. Thank you for being the... Amen. The voice to let the folks know you're planting a seed to match a need. The devil has got to back up. Praise God. Pastor Pedro, slip your hand up. Amen. Praise God. Elder Raphael, out of Cuba. These are out of Cuba. 
Dr. Reverend Colin Corley, he blew on the ground here last night. Slip your hand up for him. Reverend Lance Brown, his bodyguard, and Minister Cheryl Corley. Where are they? I don't hear any sound. Praise God. That's Mount, uh, that's the Apostolic Church in, in Canada. Amen. Successor of the great Bishop Ricketts. They are turning Canada upside down. Out of Turks and Caicos we have, amen, uh, Bishop Hannah, Bishop Derek Hannah. Praise God. Bishop John Smith. Hallelujah. Former national superintendent of the, of the United Pentecostal Church in Jamaica now running an independent ministry. We're so happy to have him. Praise the Lord. And we want to ask at this time, if I could stop calling names, amen, praise God. Stop calling names. Well, let me look again and see if you see anybody else. Amen. The representative that came with uh, uh, Bishop John Smith, could you please stand? Where is Bishop Scott? I saw the Holy Ghost anointed head through the door. Stand. Raise your hands. Praise God. He's coming through the door. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We bless God for these uh, great uh, leaders who have come. CSI representative is in the house. CSI representative is in the house. Amen. Sister Celinda. Amen. She is the director for a world movement feeding uh, the disastrous um, area, people in the disastrous area around the world. Cuba, uh, Istanbul, Turkey. She was here today on the floor. Put your hands together for her. And the wives of these leaders, put your hands together for them. Missionary Vicky Stand, a bilingual singer and musician. That's why she's here. Amen. Aren't you excited about the Spanish group that are here? From Cuba and other parts. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I think of God. Stand Elder Powell and just wave your hand. Let them see you. Elder Powell coming out of the United States. Representative of the great... Our uh, revivalist Bishop Keith Williams, Overseer Williams, his brother, is in the house. We have some giants in the house. And if I didn't go to call any more of the names, because we have so many representatives here, I want, I'm going to ask the representative from the various churches, I didn't call your name, please just stand. They said I'm breaking the protocol by calling too much names. I, I, I'm just excited over these men of God. All the representative from the other churches, just stand, please stand. We're going to put Brack and Grand Cayman, Brack and Westway in. Minister Courtney Morris representing the church in Cayman Brack. Come on. And his wife. Amen. Stand, stand, stand. Praise God. Westway, Evangelist Prudence, Chuck, and the team. Stand and just wave your hands and give the Lord a praise. All right. Praise God. Pastor, Evangelist. My most favorite, I hope my preacher ladies don't get jealous now. I said it many times, my favorite woman preacher. When she gets anointed and kicked that foot out, uh, something happened. <laughs> Put your hands together for Evangelist Jasset Mackenzie. Mother Thomas, we're glad you're in the house. Praise God. Put your hands together for the Spanish leaders of the All Nations United Pentecostal Church. Sister Toscano and Evangelist Toscano, her husband. Put your hands together for them. What about our beautiful choir? Ministerial body of the All Nations United Pentecostal Church, you are the foundation of this thing. Stand and raise your hands. Come on, stand and raise your hands. Stand and raise Evangelist Johnson, Minister Brown, Minister Brown, come slip your hand up. Minister Ron Mullins, Cayman Islands and the United States. Reverend Shivanis, Reverend Shivan, stand up. Stand up, stand up. Reverend Shivan, praise the Lord. Amen. Minister Henry, slip your hand up. Minister McCarthy, come on, slip your hand up. Minister Brown, where are you? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You see, it's the Holy Ghost rally that is coming on, and we won't have time for this anymore, so we're making sure out of the New Testament church, the representative of the New Testament body is in the house, my good friend, Bishop Morris, and he brought some Tastalwat men to sing. Come on, put your hands together for Bishop Morris. Come on, put your hands together for Bishop Morris. Tomorrow you're going to bring a greeting to us, sir. Amen. Praise God. And his precious wife is right beside him. Praise God. Put your hands together for them one more time. 
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let me hope I'm not missing anyone. I'm over 50 years of age and my glasses sometimes can fool me. Praise. I'm, I'm still looking. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. All the leaders in the house, please stand. All the officers of this church, the officers of the other churches, just stand and wave your hand like this. Shake the heavens. All the ministers, the evangelists, come on. Stand and just wave your hand like this. There's a lot of ministers in this house. And we're going to get a real good list tomorrow before the Holy Ghost rally. And not one of you will be left out. Where is the English representative? Ev Evangelist Jasset, uh, sorry, no. Evangelist uh, Atkins. Evangelist Maxine uh, Atkins. Please stand. I didn't say Atkins. I said Atkins. Wave your hand. Wave, wave your hand. Wave, wave. Come and take the mic and preach tonight. She said, no. Come on, somebody, slip your hands up. Slip your hands up. Slip your hands up. Slip your hands up. Come on, all nation, mass choir, make some noise. Make some noise. Pastor Diane Henry out of Mandeville, Jamaica. Slip your hand up. The singing bird, she's in the house. Sister Dylan, the singing bird from Jamaica. Bishop Coates and Dr. Coates, why not jump to your feet and just wave your hands and give the Lord a praise? Amen. Where is Reverend Castle? Jump to your feet and shout. Gunshot penetrates his body, but he's still alive. Somebody said, blood, 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 blood. I don't hear the church. I don't hear the church. Praise God. We're going to have to stretch this convention to another week because we want to hear some of these preachers. You think you're going to get away? We're going to extend this convention. Praise God. Can we find money to buy food? They came back from the shop the other day and they said food is nearly $40,000. Nearly $40,000. Amen. Praise God. I don't care. <laughs> Praise God. Can we extend it? Can I get a vote? Hallelujah. Just tell the people it's revival. It's revival. It's a breakout. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right. Evangelist Michelin, lift your hands. Evangelist Walters, lift your hands. Evangelist Henry, lift your hand. Henry, lift your hands. Evangelist Henry, lift your hands in the house. Praise God. Somebody clap your hands and say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Clap your hands and shout, I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you jump to your feet and shout at Jesus? Frighten the devil and the demons around you. Shout up, shout up, Jesus, I want to hear a Jesus, it will make the earth rumble, minister, preach, shout to Jesus, Deacon Brown, shout to Jesus, shout to Jesus in the house. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And tomorrow night, we're going to make sure before the Holy Ghost rally, all of these leaders that I couldn't just call out of my head, we're going to get your name on the list so I don't miss anybody. Praise God. Somebody say revival time. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Praise God. Before we bring on the preacher before we bring on the preacher reverend victor nayarko come and take half a minute and greet reverend bishop victor nayarko take a minute and greet it could be more than half a minute but not over a minute out of the united states can we praise the lord everybody god is good I have 30 seconds left. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for him. Come on, put your hands together for him. Come on, put your hands together for him. Reverend Paul Block, come and take half a minute and greet the church. Hallelujah. Reverend Paul Black. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tithing all around, Jesus saves. Somebody shout in the house. Come on, call the name.
Reverend Santi Imanis, bilingual. Run over here and greet the church. Half a minute. Well, the Lord I serve is mighty and powerful, and there is none like him. So if you decided to come to church, we're going to praise him. We're going to let the Holy Ghost just move over here. Let the glory of God, the power of God, hallelujah, follow us through the weekend and everywhere we go. Jesus. Can everybody shout Jesus? Somebody shout Jesus. Put some Jesus in the stuff, boy. Come on, choir, shout Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. He's in the, he's in the house. A half a minute. Reverend Lawrence Brown, out of Toronto, Canada. Greet the church, sir. He's on fire, but we're giving him just half a minute. Oh, it's real. It's real. How about you? How about you? Praise God. This is personal. My doubts are settled. And I know. I know. It's real. And it's real. It's real. Come on, somebody shout. I know it's real. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up. Come on, somebody give him one more praise. Stand for the word. Stand for the word. My armor bearer, come here quickly. Just, just shout. I, I want to hear your voice. Pastor Joel Clark, just let me hear your voice. Just half a second. Shout hallelujah. I can't hear you. Shout hallelujah. Shout out to God. One more time. Reverend Scott Vera, shout a glory from over there. Reverend Scott Vera, shout a glory from over there. The team of ministers that came with you, shout a glory from over there. Bishop Coach, shout another glory from over there. Dr. Coach, shout another glory from over there. Somebody shout glory in the house. Somebody shout glory in the house. I feel something boiling in the house. I am healed already, I am healed already. Rub your hand on your back, rub your hand on your head. Cancer, tumor, glaucoma, come on, come on. Cold, flu, liver, heart, kidney. I feel rough in here. I've got to put the preacher on. Put your hand on your head. Blood, 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 blood. Blood of Jesus in the house. Tomorrow night we, the anointing is strong. Tomorrow night we put the choir on, right? Tomorrow night we put the choir on. I, I think that it's boiling for the word. Stand, 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 hold hands with somebody. It's time for the word. It's time for the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stretch your hands across. We are many bodies, but we are one spirit. 
Hallelujah. Reverend. They're crying out for the choir. What should I do? I'm in trouble. Preacher, can you give me the permission to put them on? Tomorrow night, the preacher is boiling. <laughs> hallelujah. Choir, shout hallelujah. Help the musician. Choir, shout Jesus. Choir, shout Jesus. One more time, choir, shout Jesus. I believe that everything is going to get the Holy Ghost in this house from tonight onward to tomorrow night everything the bench is going to get if you bring the cat he's going to get filled i'm serious as a judge hallelujah praise god everything in the whole in the upper room got the holy ghost everything the very house the room the bible says the room was filled with the holy ghost first tomorrow night you'll hear the choir reverend evangelist Kleindins has a passion for soul. He has excelled in the evangelistic field and that we know from Maryland to Missouri working in evangelism and seeing many souls being baptized in Jesus name. He has been evangelizing since 1988. He and his precious wife uh, were directly involved in National Pentecost Sunday launched and has since then returned to full-time evangelism. He is now the director of the National Evangelist Ministry in the North American uh, Mission. It is indeed a pleasure to have an international evangelist in the person of Douglas Evangelist Douglas Kleindins. He's not his first time in the Cayman Islands. We've seen him here before, but he's fresh. Amen. Oh, the heist tonight. Amen. We bless God. Well, he's married. Uh, you clear your mind. He's married. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to clear the air. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to call right now this handsome, anointed man of God to come to the lectern and just stretch your hands and say, Lord, cover him right now and let him speak to heart. Come and preach. Come and preach. Give the Lord a great big hand clap all over this house. Make some joyful noise under the Lord. Oh, make a joyful noise all the way to the back. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. My soul cries out. Oh, praise God for saving me. It is a tremendous joy, very great privilege and high honor to be back here in the Grand Cayman Islands, be with all of you in this wonderful, esteemed convocation and conference tonight. I've enjoyed everything. I would have enjoyed listening to the choir one more time. I enjoy their singing, so beautiful. But it seemed like the Lord wants us to go into his word tonight. And I certainly give honor to you and I add my voice of honor to all of you, all the bishops and pastors and evangelists, apostles and prophets that are here tonight, all the men and women of God, we honor you. And most especially, I'd like to honor, maybe there's another microphone on somewhere that's doing that. I'd like to honor the wonderful bishop and first lady of this church leading this conference, leading this church. Aren't we blessed? in the ministry of Bishop First Lady Sister Clark. Let them know how much you love them and appreciate them. Give them a hand clap of love and appreciation and high honor. We love them. We thank God for them. We've been friends for a mighty long time, and it's been too long since I've been here. But now we've fixed it. When I would see him at the conference, I would say to him, Bishop, the Lord is not pleased with you. And he would look at me like, what? And I said, it's been too long since I have come to visit you. And so I am very happy and very honored to be here tonight. I have friends everywhere, and it's a great privilege. 
I'll be turning your attention tonight to the book of Joshua, chapter number 24, verses 15 and 16. The book of Joshua 24, 15 and 16. Uh, I come to you from revival in Dallas, Texas. Now, I live in Florida, but I've not been home for about three months. We've been in a prayer revival in Dallas, Texas. We've been praying Monday night at 7 p.m., Tuesday morning at 5 a.m., Wednesday morning at 5 a.m., and Wednesday night. And when I get back this week, we will start our 12th week. You don't sound too excited about that. See, we all want revival. We just don't want to be inconvenienced to have it. Uh, the Lord's going to have to help me tonight help you. My wife has a morning prayer call every morning on East Coast time from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And she prays with about 150 to 180 ministers and ministers' wives from five different apostolic organizations. She's been leading this call for five years every morning from 6 to 7. I better just preach. You don't want to hear about how to have revival. Joshua 24, verse 15. Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. I bet a good place to put an amen. amen. If it seem evil unto you, or not a good idea, to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, the god of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. With the help of the Lord tonight, I'm gonna to challenge all of us because my brothers and sisters, it is time to choose. Lord, I ask for your great anointing to do a work beyond my intellect, beyond my emotion, beyond my passion, beyond my zeal. I ask you to do a work beyond the hearts and minds and thoughts of the people gathered here. Reach beyond our flesh, get beyond our surface and let your word come deep into our heart tonight. I pray, Lord, that you will set the captives free, that you will loose us from every bondage of mind or emotion, and you will turn us into the great end-time revival church that you have called and destined us to be. And, Lord, we will give you all the praise and all the glory. Would you clap your hands one more time under the Lord? Do it with passion, with expectation. Something good is about to happen. Something good is about to happen. Do you feel some expectation? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The choice is becoming quite clear. I don't know if it's ever been more relevant never been more critical, but it's never been more simple. We are arriving at a very simple decision. It is either the world or the church. It is time for you and I of the household of faith to choose. Do we want this world or do we want the church? Now, as you're thinking about your decision tonight, you need to understand that I would like to further define the choice this way. It is either a world in trouble 
or a church in revival. Those are the only two options that remain for us tonight as we press ourselves forward and prophecy is being revealed and unfolded at an unprecedented rate. And as we are seeing everything come together, we are going to be pushed into one simple understanding. We are either going to have revival or we are going to be swallowed up by this world. 2 Timothy 3, you know it well. In the last days, perilous times. That's dangerous times. Dangerous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. They will be slanderers without self-control. Brutal people, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And in the midst of all of that, they will have a form of godliness. The same people will claim to be saved. The same people will claim to be Christians. But the biblical wisdom is loud and clear from such turn away. I love you tonight, but I've only got a few minutes. And there is no time now for just a form of godliness. We've got to become godly. We've got to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got to walk on this highway of holiness and righteousness. If you're going to abandon the troubles of this world, if you're going to escape the judgments coming upon this world, if you're not going to be part of all the calamity and crisis that is coming into this world, I have a very simple directive from the scripture for you. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. little word of encouragement for my fellow ministers tonight. I'm just 58 years old, so I'm just easing into my years of becoming an elder. I'm going to be hard to deal with when I become an elder because I'm getting pretty strong right now. But I think the time has come that we get back to preaching about worldliness. Worldliness is suffocating us. Worldliness is stealing the things we want more than we want anything else. We are up to our eyeballs in the things of this world. And I've come to challenge you tonight. If you're listening to me on the radio or television, I've come to tell you tonight, this world is burning down quick. There's a way of safety. Come out of the world. Become part of the church. Because the same book of judgments and warning is also a book of promises. And principles and godly provision. While what's happening in Egypt is judging Egypt, there is that place called Goshen where God's people are protected and taken care of. But we're going to have to get in one side or the other tonight and decide which way we're going to go. The entire scope of an evil, godless system is summed up in one single verse of Scripture in John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. If you want to know what's going on out there, that's what's going on in the world. The enemy is in charge. The spirit of Antichrist is in full control and it is stealing and killing and destroying. But that's only half the verse. There's more to that story. While everything in the world seems to be killing, stealing and destroying, Jesus said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You see what we're dealing with here? It's either the spirit of antichrist in the world or it's the spirit of Christ in the church. 
you're going to have to make your decision as to which way you're going to go and which you're going to trust for your future. My brothers and sisters, everyone listening to under the sound of my voice, it's either this or that. It's either here or there. It's the goodness of the Lord or it's the troubles of this old world. And I love you enough to tell you tonight that it's time to choose. I love you, but we've been playing around. We've been playing around. It's, it's, it's too late to be playing around. The midnight hour is upon us. Behold the bridegroom coming. Get ready to meet him. If I could bring you a prophetic word from the Lord tonight, I would shout it with all of my heart. Prepare, 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 prepare. The Lord is coming soon. This world is not long to last. You better decide, are you going to make your way with the world or are you going to make your way with the church? Let me explain to you how I'm going to preach tonight. I'm not going to preach until I feel like I have proved my point. I'm not going to preach until I feel like I have settled the argument or until I think you understand what I'm trying to say because I think you're getting it already. I'm going to preach until I peel the layers of worldliness off of you, till I push the cloud of darkness over top of you away until somebody shakes off those heavy bands of this old world and all of its heaviness and ungodliness and all the things you think you want out there and realize that there's no one like Jesus. There's no one like Jesus. Only Jesus will satisfy your soul. If you believe that's true, give the Lord a great hand praise. They're gonna make me work for it a little bit, so I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna plow on in here. Somebody needs to get set free. This church built on his word, this church built on the rock is not only going to survive everything that happens in this world, but we are going to thrive. And we are going to have revival in the most contradictory of circumstances. The eternal truths of his word are designed to survive the most contradictory situations that exist. This light will shine in darkness. There will be springs in the dry deserts. There will be bread for the hungry. There will be water for the thirsty. There will be help for the time of trouble. Good will triumph over evil. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of fear everywhere. But I've got my mind made up tonight that I am not going to live in fear. I am not going to live in doubt. I am not going to live in anxiety. I'm not having a bad mental health day. I said, I'm not having a bad mental health day. It's not God's will for you to be sad and discouraged and depressed and full of anxiety and half suicidal and worried about it. Am I going to make it? It's God's will for you to wake up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. And though the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. Come on, I'm gonna peel some worldliness off of somebody tonight. You've gotta make up your mind. The weak will say, I am strong. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy always comes in the morning. So I present you with a choice tonight. You can weep or you can worship. I said, you can weep or you can worship. And I promise you, if you will worship more, you will weep less. If you will joy in the Lord, you will not be full of anxiety. You will not be full of fear. You won't need all that prescription medication. You can be weak or you can be strong. 
You can walk in fear or you can walk in faith. My brothers and sisters, it's coming down to one or the other. I stand tonight as a vanguard at the door of the church to say we don't want all that stuff in here. We don't want the fear in here. We don't want the anxiety in here. We don't want all the worldliness in here. We don't want the judgments in here. This is a place of victory. This is a place of power. This is a place of anointing. This place is holy ground. This is where angels come and visit with the people of God. This is where the captives are set free. This is where sinners find forgiveness. This is where the grace is. And it's not just grace, it's amazing grace. I was on an airplane with a preacher a while back, Bishop Thomas, and he had left the apostolic faith. And he was sitting right beside me. He said, Brother Kleindens, your problem is you're in a bubble. I said, well, fair enough. I prefer to call it a hedge. But you can call it a bubble if you want to. I said, but I'm just going to ask you to do me one favor. If you don't want to be in the bubble, that's your choice. But leave the bubble alone. Don't go trying to destroy the hedge. If you don't want to live behind the hedge, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we want to stay behind this hedge. I've been married 38 years behind the hedge. I've raised two sons that don't drink alcohol. They're not on drugs. They're not in prison. They're both ministers of the gospel tonight behind the hedge. They married godly young ladies that are good Christians. We now have two grand, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grand, uh, Paul now. I'm Papa. I've got two little grandbabies and I want them raised in the hedge. I'd hate to think that by the time they grow up, somebody's destroyed the hedge. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But as for me, I found safety here. I found blessing here. I found joy here. I've already come out of the world. I'm not looking back. I don't want what they have. I'm not interested in anything they have to offer. What does the world have that you are so interested in anyway? And those of you that are listening to me on the radio and television, you may be up into the world all the way up to your eyeballs, but what's it doing for you? How happy are you? How safe is your family? How secure is your future? How much peace do you have? How much joy do you have? I promise you it's far better living for God. I promise you that that this is the place of safety. This is the place of victory. This This is the best case scenario. I know some of you are trying to get by on minimum requirements. You don't want to do any more than is absolutely necessary to get to heaven. Pastor, what do I have to do to sing in the choir? What do I have to do to be a member of the church? You're all worried about having to do this and having to do that. You don't want to do anything extra. That's your choice. I wouldn't be married 38 years if I wasn't willing to do a little extra. I only remember making a few little promises. Sickness and health. Till death do us part. Richer and poor and forsaken all the others. We got through that in about a month. I've done all kinds of things that I didn't agree to at the altar that day. I didn't know they were even part of the agreement. But as the years have gone by, and I decided that out of a law of love, I'm doing more than was in the fine print. I don't ask my wife, what's the absolute minimum I can do and we still stay married? Just how much can I get away with here and you won't divorce me? What kind of marriage would we have if we didn't want to do anything extra ever and then we want to approach God that way? We want God's very best. We want God to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we cannot even contain. But that doesn't come to people who are trying to give God the bare minimum. 
Now, y'all sure did a lot of shouting and dancing when the choir was singing. But it's the truth that'll set you free. I will loose you tonight if you'll let me. I'll free your mind. I'll free your spirit. I'll open up your heart where the God can pour out his spirit like it's overflowing, like a well springing up unto everlasting life. But you gotta empty yourself of yourself. We're living in dangerous times, difficult times, desperate times, unrestrained violence all over the world, moral depravity, not only tolerated, but celebrated. Confusion has replaced common sense. Personal expression is now more valued than modesty and decency. And then we come up with little phrases. I don't know if you say it here. They say it back home. Little phrases that are cute to play to our desire to just do our own thing. You do you, boo. Well, I got a question for you, boo. Is doing you doing God? Is your thing God's thing? Is what you're doing and the way you're acting the way that's going to bring the blessing and the anointing of God down upon your life? We are kidding ourselves tonight if we think we can do this haphazardly and half-heartedly. It's not going to work. If you're going to strive for the mastery, you have to strive lawfully. And when you get into prayer and you get into worship and you get committed and you get dedicated, I promise you the blessings of God will overtake you Christianity has never worked for those that are only half in it's an all or nothing proposition it's either all your heart all your soul all your mind all your strength or it's nothing at all sin and sinfulness is everywhere every kind of addictive drug easily accessible and it's increasing in use rapidly anger has become a drug of choice for many Christian values are being mocked openly publicly television education entertainment and you support it while they're doing it perilous times have indeed come sin and sinfulness rage in our culture It's a destructive force raging through this world like a cat five hurricane tearing up everything in its past. And here we are, church attendance becoming less important. I'm just peeling some layers here tonight. Loving the world and the things of the world. We're starting to make provision for it and allow it and act like it's okay. It's never worked. You want to know why you're struggling? Because of worldliness. It's never worked. It dilutes it down. It waters it down. It makes it of none effect. Selfishness and self-centeredness. and It's become the social norm. And everyone's doing that which is right in their own eyes. You have your own truth. Well, I think. Well, I feel. Well, I believe. That is the presumptuous sin of the Bible. To feel like you or I know better than God. Can I tell you something that will revolutionize your life? If you ever get the understanding that God's will is better than your will. It's not just right. It will not just get you to heaven. It's better. Say weak amens because you're unconvinced. You weren't immediately sure about that. We think somehow doing God's will limits us. Well, I'm just going to do the will of God. Like it's some secondary life, some lesser possibility. If I do the will of God, then I won't have this and I won't have that and I won't have this over here. And You feel like we've got to get a revelation that God's will is the absolute best case scenario for any of our lives 
if any of us are ever so privileged as to do God's will, you will never be more happy. You will never have more joy. You will never have more peace. You will never have more blessed assurance. I wish I was preaching to a church tonight. I feel like I'm preaching to a house full of sinners that don't even understand that God's will is the best possibility for any family, for any marriage, for any person. The devil has deceived us into feeling that we're losing out on something. We're missing nothing, Bishop, except for heartache and problems, pain and suffering. I made up my mind a while back. If there was no heaven, and I believe there is, and if there was no hell, and I believe there is both, but if there was no heaven and there was no hell, this is the best way to live. If all I had was my 75 or 80 years here and then it was all over. But I could choose to live for God and live his laws while I'm alive or I could choose not to and then I die. I promise you, living for God is the best possible life. It's better than anything the world has. I'm just peeling layers. It's better than their drugs. It's better than their alcohol. It's better than their parties. It's better than all their money. It's better than their prestige. It's better than their fame and fortune. It's better than the fanciest car, the biggest house, gold or silver. Somebody's got to understand that Jesus is better than all of that. I wouldn't trade this. One writer said, I'd rather suffer affliction with the people of God. We need that kind of a mentality. I'd rather be with you on a dry, hard, difficult midweek Bible study. I'd rather be with you trudging up the rough side of the mountain. I'd rather, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I'd rather be in the Cayman Islands tonight than any luxurious resort place that this world has to offer. They don't make a five-star hotel that I'd rather be in tonight than to be right here in this church feeling the brush of angels' wings, feeling the anointing of the Lord, hearing this choir sing. There's not a rock star there's not a pop singer. There's not anybody that's produced a, a golden record that I'd rather listen to in this world than to hear you sing of the goodness of Jesus. Folks, I don't think we know what we've got tonight. I don't think we realize we're sitting in heavenly places. I don't think we realize that we have more here than you will ever touch out there. Mental health has become a focus. Multiplied millions living without peace of mind or joy or hope or a sense of well-being. Emotional anxiety, mental stress. They're treating it with powerful drugs. Marriage is under intense pressure. Our children are facing incredible pressure to conform to this world socially. No matter which way you slice it, our world's in trouble. Oh, and it's not just them against us. They can't even agree with each other. If you pay attention to them now, they're fighting each other. They, they got so confused about what's right and wrong. They know there's no longer even a way to determine it because it's gotten so convoluted. There is so much darkness and confusion. They're not just not getting along with us. They can't get along with each other. Our world's in trouble. Wars and rumors of wars. The political world is hostile and combative. Spiritual wickedness is in high places. Injustice is going unchecked. The vulnerable and the weak are being exploited. The world is in trouble. Why do you want any part of that? What virtue are you seeing out there? What is out there that any of us could really long after? At the very same time that all of this is going on, the world is in credible trouble. It's about to burn down around us. They're about to kill each other and shoot each other and send bombs on each other and the nations are meeting and there's political uh, strategies going on at the highest levels and we don't know who's going to launch a nuke and we don't know what uh, biological weapon is going to be loose next. They're full of hatred. They're full of venom. They're full of malice. It's an evil, dark 
difficult world we're living in. I don't know why any of us would want any part of it at all. I don't know what is out there that is enticing us away. Who has bewitched us? under a spell in the name of Jesus I break the spell tonight I say blind eyes be open open our eyes to the goodness of Jesus open our eyes to the blessing of the Lord I need this church to clap your hands and magnify the Lord I mean do it sincerely uh, that's just polite I mean sincerely and passionately Because at the very same time, in the very same world, the very same people, the Bible says, at evening time, there shall be light. At evening time, Bishop, when there's darkness everywhere, when it's the darkest of nights, when it's evil on every hand, when the spirit of Antichrist is seeming to take over everything, at evening time, it shall be light. In the darkest of night, in the deepest part of the valley, there's going to be light. Yes, Antichrist is real. Yes, evil is real. Yes, the trouble is real. The struggle is real. But there shall be light in the darkest of night. I've come to prophesy to you tonight there's going to be victory in the midst of the struggle. I'm telling you there's coming a day prophesied by the prophet Zechariah when he said there was never a day like it before. There'll never be a day like it again where it will be day and night at exactly the same time. See, we get this idea when the Bible says at evening time it shall be light that darkness will be over all the land but down a side road around the corner there'll be the little church house and the little church will be singing this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine and we're going to have our little light on in the window and we're just going to kind of make it by the dim rays of a dim light it's not going to be like that he said let me tell you what it's going to be like the darkness is going to be so dark it's going to be the darkest of nights but the light is going to be so bright it's going to be like daytime even in the evening time you hear me tonight there's going to be a revival people there's going to be a victorious people there's going to be a godly people whether you're a part of them or not is up to you but there's going to be an end time bride of Christ amen who have made their robes spotless who are walking the highway of holiness which are doing that which is right in the eyes of God and we're going to be having so great of a revival the anointing is going to be so strong the healings are going to be so miraculous it's going to be so notable that we'll be trying to decide is this the night or is this the day is this like terrible tribulation or is this the greatest revival we've ever had because they're both going to be going on at exactly the same time and all I've come to tell you tonight is it's time to choose are you going to be a part of the dark night or are you going to be part of the bright light It'd be easier if we were fighting the devil. I'm not fighting the devil tonight. Fighting our flesh. It's your flesh that's holding back. There ain't a devil strong enough to stop this house from worshiping God tonight. It ain't the devil stopping you. It's you stopping you. You haven't decided if you want it yet. You don't know how far you're willing to go yet. You don't know how inconvenienced you're willing to be yet. I love you, but they used to teach us in the old church, you can't live on the fence. One foot in the world. One foot in the church. <laughs> Y'all wasn't ready for me tonight, were you? You wanted me to throw some anointing oil and some pixie dust and throw around some miracles and hand out some prophecies without any prerequisites. Just bless you no matter how you're living. Just speak God's favor on you no matter what you do. It's time somebody tells us the hour's too late. 
it's far spent. The bridegroom's on the way. You better get up, shake yourself, get your lamp trimmed, and make sure you got oil in your lamp. You better hope he don't come tonight acting like that. You say, well, it's enough for me. I'll be all right. You think it, it doesn't really matter? Doesn't matter what songs they sing. Doesn't matter what sermon they preach. Doesn't matter what they do. I'll be fine. I'm going to heaven. Let me tell you when it'll matter to you. It'll matter to you when your lost loved ones are ready to get saved. What are you going to do when that prodigal calls you some night, one o'clock in the morning, in trouble, desperate? Pray for me. Are you ready to pray right now? I mean, right now. Can you get in the Holy Ghost in the next 10 seconds? Take authority over every demon that's got a hold of them. Push back the darkness over them. You don't want to take that call weak. You don't want to take that call dry. You don't want to take that call haven't been to church, haven't been worshiping, haven't been praying. And you better hear me, they're going to be coming because this world's getting dangerous. They're going to come running from every direction. They're going to come running and they're going to come bound. They're going to come demon possessed. They're going to come addicted to alcohol and drugs. And if they walk in among us and all we have is a form of godliness, it's not going to set the captives free. We need to set this church on fire with revival. revival is that all you want ain't nothing stopping us tonight we can sing as much as we want to sing we can worship as much as we want to worship you can say amen and hallelujah as much as you want to it's all up to you there's nothing holding you back there's nothing restraining you but you the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save his ear is not heavy that he cannot hear God is not struggling the truth is not weakening the spirit is not diminishing revival is growing the anointing is increasing what about you? While this world turns into blasphemers and boasters and arrogant, the Bible said it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They may be high tonight. They may be drunk tonight, but they're going to receive, and they're going to prophesy, and the young men are going to see visions, and the old men are going to dream dreams, and the Lord's going to pour out His Spirit upon them. But what kind of church are they going to come into? What kind of atmosphere are they going to walk into? Are they going to walk out of a troubled world into a troubled church? Are they going to walk out of a world in trouble into a church in a red hot revival? I mean where the glory cloud of the Lord is coming down. Where the anointing is destroying the yoke. I am ready for a Holy Ghost explosion. I've got an anointing to loose you and liberate you and set you free. Can you give the Lord a high praise? Is that it? Is that all you want? How much Holy Ghost do you want? How much anointing do you want to feel? We can have it if we want it. I said we can have it if we want it. I appreciate these musicians helping me out tonight and I'm gonna let you keep helping me out. Sometimes music's just like a little soothing. I, I, I need us to be cut. I need us to feel it tonight. I need the word to sink deep inside of you. Some of you ought to be feeling convicted by now. Do you remember conviction? You're saying tonight about way back, way back God. Way back, we got convicted. Way back when the preacher pointed out our failures, we said, it's me, oh me, standing in the need of prayer. Way back, we ran the altars and repented. Way back, we called on God for mercy. 
I was raised in the fire. I can't be happy in just smoldering smoke and coals. You mentioned Ethiopia tonight. I went 11 years. Not only there, Pakistan, India, Papua New Guinea, Nigeria. I've been in places where it's, you just, people said, I'm going to pray for your trip to Pakistan. I said, no, don't pray for my trip to Pakistan. They said, why not? I said, pray for my trip home. I'll get there just fine. Getting out's the problem. <laughs> That's when you realize patty caking for Jesus doesn't work. You're either anointed or you're not. You either have the power of God or you don't. And I'm telling you, what are you going to do when the one you love the most comes to you for prayer and you're trying to remember how to pray? I love you. We have leaders from apostolic organizations and pastors everywhere. And they'll hear me probably all over the place on social media what I'm about to say. And I've been saying it at home in the conventions and the conferences I've been preaching. We need a revival. God's people, God's church, Holy Ghost, one God, Jesus' name, tongue talking. We need a revival. We have a little flame. We need to be a blazing fire. See? See what I mean? See what I mean? It's just, it's nice. It, it's polite. It, it's courteous. But it's not passionate. It's not passionate. It's not vibrant. We're going through motions. We're, we're happy to go to conventions and conferences and sing songs. But if we're not careful, we're going to be just as guilty of having a form of godliness and denying the power. I'm here to try to start an earthquake tonight. We got to choose a world in trouble or a church in revival. And it's revival for survival. The darkness is too great. The evil is too strong. For any muddy mixture between the two, you got to choose who you're going to serve. The enemy's coming in like a flood. Do you know what to do when the enemy comes in like a flood? What's, the, what's God's response to the enemy coming in like a flood? He will raise up the standard. I'm here to raise the standard tonight. In case you haven't noticed, it's flooding. The news is flooding. The entertainment's flooding. The world is flooding. It's coming in all around us. It's up to our ankles and up to our knees. And we are trodden through it trying to go to work and trying to come home and live our lives. Uh, we've got to raise the standard. We've got to raise the standard of worship. We've got to raise the standard of prayer. We need to make preaching an altar call the most important parts of every service. I love the choir but it can't be the most important, the altar call. I travel everywhere. I was 147 flights last year. I'm in churches all over the place. We're singing good, we're preaching good. We get to the altar. And this is where it happens. This is where the captives get set free. This is where the miracles take place. This is where somebody receives the Holy Ghost. We got to set our altars on fire. But the fire in the altar has got to come from sacrifice. It's got to come from prayer. And if we'll take the altar fire and then give it to the choir, they can put it by the altar of incense and they can worship with that fire. We started out that revival in Dallas. We had that Sunday church service. People lingered around the altar. I said, my wife and I have a morning prayer call. We'll be up at 6 a.m. in the morning praying. Well, it's 5 a.m. in Dallas. I said, if anybody wants to come and join us, we'll go over here to the prayer room. We went to that prayer room. I told my wife, walking over to the church, I said, probably five or six people will come. It's a pretty good-sized church, about 500 members. I was astounded that morning when 19 people walked into the prayer room at 5 a.m. And then we prayed, and I said, well, let's do it again tomorrow. And 22 came the next day. And I told, and pastor and his wife were there. So you can't have revival unless pastor and his wife get on fire. And the leadership, 
The drummer's got to pray. The keyboardist has to pray. The singers, the guitar player has to pray. The choir members and the soloists have to pray. No, no, you don't want to go way back. Way back, they said, if you don't pray, you don't play. That was way back, God. So when they took to the pulpit and they took to their musicians, they weren't just talented and skillful. There was an anointing that came down from heaven. There was an anointing that set you free even though you came discouraged, even though you came sad, even though you came without the victory. They sang two songs and the victory was all over the house because they were singing from prayer. They were singing from a dedicated, committed walk with God. And we're trying to whip it up with skillfulness and lights and videos and and I'm not against all that. I love it. Put the lights on, put the video, roll the smoke, do whatever you want to do. I don't care what's going on as long as I can feel. I've got to feel the anointing of God. I've got to feel the brush of angels' wings. I've got to know what it feels like to walk out of a 5 a.m. prayer meeting and I've been in the presence of the Lord. So we prayed the second week and the third week and the fourth week and the fifth week. And every time I come in and I'd preach to those folks, I could see them like some of you looking at me tonight just with tired old faces. There he is again. Oh, my God. He's going to want 5 a.m. prayer. Oh, they got that evangelist here again. I've become the prophet in Dallas that's troubling Israel. And I said, I'm going to trouble you until you either get revived or throw me out. It's, go, it's either revival or riot. Hallelujah. It's revival or riot. I'm going to trouble you until you catch on fire or until you've had enough of me and you show me to the door. Then I'll just go trouble the next place I go. But I know you're hungry for God. I know you want the Lord. I'm trying to tell you the church that travails, prevails. It's a travailing church that's a prevailing church. So we've been raising the standard. 11 weeks last week. You know how many people were in the morning prayer? 67. Monday night prayer, 250. That's sweet. That's nice. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? You'll, you'll, you'll get up in the morning to go fishing. You'll get up to go to your job. You'll get up to go on vacation. You'll get up to go shopping. You'll get up to catch an airplane. There's been a lot of mornings I woke up so tired. My body's so racked. Been out preaching. Got in late. It's three or four hours of sleep. Alarm goes off. I go, whoa, that was a short night. I get up, put my feet in my shoes, get everything together. But as soon as I turn myself toward that prayer room, I get excited. You see, let me tell you what motivates me to pray. It's not, it's not being obedient to God. I don't pray so that I can go to heaven. I'm not praying so I don't go to hell. Those are not my motivations. I'm not trying to check off a box that says, okay, I was a good boy, I went to prayer. I'm not trying to meet a qualification. You know what makes me want to get up and go to the prayer room? Faith. I know that when I pray, I'm changing everything around me. I know that when I start calling out the name of Jesus and I take my burdens to the Lord, I can leave my burdens there. I can leave my troubles there. Come on, I know it's getting late, but y'all the one that sang forever, not me. Can you, can you get a little heavy with the word tonight? Can you get... He's telling me a great miracle has taken place and he wants to testify about it and we're going to hear about it shortly in the name of Jesus. See, there's miracles happening right now. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. You see how vibrant that hand clap is? Because we get excited about miracles. 
but we'll be more miracles than we can add up if we will get all in for the Lord, if we will lay our hearts on the altar. There's no place more steady than the church. There's no place more stable than the church. There's no place more secure than the church. There's no place safer than the church. This church is going to survive the darkest night. It's going to survive the deepest valley. It's going to come through the strongest storm. I'm trying to peel the layers of worldliness off of somebody. This church is a strong tower of the name of Jesus. The righteous run into it and are safe. And I ask you tonight, if not the church then where? If not here, then where? This church is a city of refuge. This church is a sanctuary in this dangerous world. It's the church that shines the brightest. If you're not going to make your way with the church, then I'm asking you, where are you going to find your safety? Where are you going to find your help? The church is a home for the hurting. She's a sanctuary for the suffering. She's a tabernacle for the troubled. She is helping for the helpless. She is hope for the hopeless. The church is where your safety is. It's prayer meetings where you're going to find safety. It's revival where we're going to find help. Your hope is here. Your help is here. Your marriage can be fixed here. Come on. It's here that will save your marriage. It's here you avoid alcoholism. It's here you overcome drug addiction. It's here you get delivered of your fear. It's here you overcome depression. This end time church is a city of refuge and we ought to be running for it like our life depended on it. All right, you're done. I think you've had all of me you want. If I could cause you to think anything tonight, it would be that you would leave this world running for your life. Forsake this world. Forsake its coming judgment. Be part of a church in revival. And just in case you happen to think that I am overdoing it, overstating it, over-dramatizing it, let me slowly walk you through 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world... The love of the Father is not in him. Listen, listen. The devil's got you deceived. Listen. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Did I miss anything there? Is there some part of this world we should go ahead and partake of and be okay with and say, that'll be all right. I'll just have this much. And here's the real problem with the world. The world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Folks, if you cast your lot with this world and the ideas of the culture and the thinking and all their mindsets and everything they're posting on social media, if you become part of all of that, this world is going to pass away and you're going to pass away with it. But if you can come out from among them and give yourself wholly to God, I mean, get into this thing uh, up to your eyeballs, uh, be all in for the Lord, uh, then I want you to know uh, that you're going to abide forever. I wish I had words. I wish I knew what to say or do as I try to plow through all this mountain of flesh tonight to help you understand that every good and perfect gift cometh down from above. (laughs) The ones who know, know. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from above. The good stuff is here. I wish we could understand this is where all the good stuff comes. This is where the blessing is. This is where the peace is. This is where the joy is. See, our problem is that we've stopped believing that. So 
But we want to have our little religious experience while we give our heart and our energy and our time to the things of this world. But the problem is this world has nothing of lasting value to offer you or your family or your future. One way leads to destruction. The other way leads to eternal life. There's nothing more important than that we would fan the flames of revival. So if you're part of a church, an apostolic truth-preaching church, you should be doing everything in your power to set that church on fire. Because it's either this troubled world or a revival church. And, and, and a revival church comes from people who are putting their heart and their mind and their soul and their worship and everything they have into it and giving it their very, very best. Are you too tired to say amen? amen. Just too tired, just, just too worn out, just, just completely overrun to even say amen. Folks, I'm telling you, we need a revival. We ought not be this tired. It ought not be this hard. It ought not be difficult at all. To be very honest with you, I shouldn't have even been able to preach this whole message. Somewhere about 20 minutes ago, this church should have caught on fire and took over. And I know that because I've preached it in places that have. I got all the flesh peeled off. And they got raw before the Lord. And they got so hungry for God, they wanted Him more than anything. They wanted Him more than anything this world has to offer. I wonder if the rapture took place right here, right now. If this was it, the trumpet sound, boom! How many of us would be taken and how many would be left? I just wonder if our hearts and the condition they're in are ready to go to the judgment seat of Christ. This city is a city of refuge. Y'all can play over there softly on the music. I'm going to give altar call. This church is a city of refuge. play softly on the music there it is mm. the church is a city of refuge it's the place that those people in trouble come running so you know what they did they went out and they swept the road that led to the city of refuge and if there was any little holes or divots, they filled them in with dirt and pushed them down. If there was any rocks, they threw them away. Every day, they cleared the pathway. Because any minute, someone's going to come running for their life. And they always had somebody by the gate ready to open the gate. They always had somebody ready with a welcoming hand to get them inside the city of refuge. And you may think, oh, that's not all that critical or all that important. It doesn't matter that much until you look out there and it's your daughter and she's running. It's your son and he's running. And he's running in trouble. And he's running and the world is after him. And the demons of hell are closing in. And you're running, run, baby, run. Come on, run. Run, baby, you can make it. You don't want anything in the way. You don't want anybody. You're going to have arms like this. Come on, baby, run. Run, you're going to make it. You're almost here. You're almost there. And when you get inside this city, we're going to wrap our arms around you. And the love of God is going to be around you. And you're going to feel the anointing. Stand with me across the house you have enough strength to do it I know I'm prodding you I know I'm poking you tomorrow night's Holy Ghost rally I know it I'm trying to trouble you a little bit I'm troubling you because I believe you're hungry for God I'm troubling you because I believe this is a great powerful end time revival church and I think there's a higher greater level for all of us than the way we're living right now. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Do you remember when you felt that way? When you were just so happy to be at church. I remember nine, 10, 11 week revivals where we came Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And if I had to miss one day seven weeks into the revival, 
my heart was so broken because I was so hungry and loved the Lord so much. And when I went to those revival services, every night we went to the altar and prayed. It never occurred to me five weeks in that I've been in revival five weeks. I've been going to the altar every night. Probably don't need to go tonight. That never crossed my mind because whatever was preached, whatever was said, whatever story was told, it touched my open heart. That was the good soil for the seed of the word of the Lord. And I thought it's me, oh me, standing in the need of prayer. So I wonder, I wonder, I I understand who I'm preaching to tonight. I I know Holy Ghost rallies tomorrow night. I know that. I, I understand that I'm preaching to people, ministers, ministers' wives. I understand. I understand I'm preaching to aged saints that have been in the church a long time. I understand who I'm talking to. But it's us on the altar tonight. It's us needing revive tonight. Wonder if all the men in the church could say amen. I wonder if all the ladies could say amen. I wonder if we have somebody here, maybe you've been in church 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, but you'd step out from back there somewhere and you'd walk all the way down this altar, take the long walk to the altar and say, it's me, oh me standing in the need of prayer tonight I'm better than this I'm better you can come and kneel you can come and stand we're going to loose the atmosphere with a lot of music and rejoicing in a few minutes but right now it's a moment of commitment for church people if you're listening to me on the radio or television maybe you've not been going to church maybe you're a long way from God why don't you take this moment while God's people you've got ministers and aged saints You've got mighty prayer warriors that are walking down the aisle and coming down to the altar, giving their heart fresh to the Lord, wanting to loose a real revival in their lives and in their ministries and in their churches. You know how I know you need a revival? Because I've been in a 12-week revival in Dallas and I've been revived myself. 12 weeks in, I realized, Bishop Thomas, When I showed up there to preach revival to them, I needed revival myself. And now that I've been through the process of revival, I realize how much I needed it. I didn't know it. We need it more than we realize. Where are your voices? Where are the prayer warriors? Where are the intercessors? Where are those aged, skillful, voices of prayer and ministry and prophecy that know how to call out to the Lord and create an atmosphere of prayer. Every altar call is a prayer meeting. How about it all the way out through up to the balconies? We don't have to pray. We can just go home. It's late. The time's got away. We can just go home or we can pray. We can take a few minutes and make our choice. Men, could we hear the voices of the men calling out to God? As for me and my house, deliver me of this worldliness. I can't see you. I know you're out there on that television or out there on the radio. I can't see you, but I feel somebody kneeling down by a sofa. Somebody bowing down. Somebody listening on the radio. You're praying right now. The tears are swelled up in your eyes. I want you to know that over here at the church house, the altars are full. The saints of God The seasoned warriors of the truth are humbling themselves in prayer right now. Tomorrow night is a great Holy Ghost rally. If you're listening tonight on the radio, get here tomorrow night. If you're watching us on television tonight, get here tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, this will be you at the altar. Saint of God, where you're kneeling right now, somebody will be tomorrow. Where you're standing in this altar right now, somebody will be standing there tomorrow needing the Holy Ghost. We 
need a fire of God to fall. Can you speak in tongues? Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? By the authority of the Word of God, by the anointing that is upon me tonight, I take authority over the spirit of worldliness. I cast out the spirit of worldliness. I cast it out of the church. I cast it out of you that are listening. I cast it out of every ministry, the spirit of worldliness. Turn your eyes on Jesus. The things of this world will grow strangely dim. couple of singers to help us out here in a few minutes no hurry no rush we're just in the flow of things we're in the flow take me back Lord to the fires of revival I remember when I was running for my life. When I was running from the world. I ran into a red hot apostolic church, Frederick, Maryland. Oh, they were on fire. They were shouting and dancing. They gathered around me and laid hands on me. Does anybody want to pray tonight? My friends, you need Jesus more than you can imagine. We need a fresh anointing more than we are, more than we know. You're the elect.
sympathy. Serve the gods of this world. I want you. But I think you're hungry for the Lord. Those memories on your heart. <laughs> Restore my joy and dry my weeping eyes. Take me back. Wonder what a prayer meeting would sound like across this auditorium Take right me now. Back, dear Lord, Lord, help us break to out in prayer. The place Hungering for you, thirsting for you. Lord, open up the windows of heaven, open up the doorway of the Spirit. In 
the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh. Stand, please. Everyone, stand, please. Everyone, stand in your bedrooms, your kitchens, your bathrooms, your living room, in the tabernacle. Everyone, please stand. This is a shaking night. The spirit of the Lord is all over this place. Raise your hands, everybody. Raise your hands. I'm going to ask all the leaders to come right and stand right here. Hallelujah. All the leaders, we're closing now. All the people that can come closer, just come. This is a very special night. Hallelujah. Stand in line. All the generals, just stand in line. Right across here and hold hands. And hold hands. All the generals just come right across here and hold hands. Those of you that can come up closer, just come up closer. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 They're holding hands. They're holding hands. They're holding hands. Open your mouth and shout, revival is here. Everybody shout, revival is here. I didn't say revival is coming. Everybody open your mouth and shout, revival is here. Come closer still if you can. You're going to have to be like in the upper room to have this outbreak. Hallelujah. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask all the bishops and the superintendents to pray right now. The bishops, the superintendent, the pastors, the overseers. Everybody come close. They're going to pray. It's revival time. It's revival time. It's revival time. All the
Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My brothers and sisters, mine is the task to pray this closing prayer. But I really don't think we should go until we get it right. And truth is, any one person praying tonight won't fix us. We've got to fix ourselves. Katashata Bahasata. So if when we bring our gift to the altar, there may be a need to leave the gift. Katashanda. Whatever we have to do. Kedolobosha. In one of our sessions today, we bowed our heads, we bowed our knees. But we weren't very sure how many persons bowed their hearts. How many will bow your hearts to God now? and truly surrender. We don't just want a shaking. We need a change. Is there anybody who need a change? Is there anybody hungry for a change? Well, we are gonna have to do different. So right now it's a call to true repentance where we not just confess, but we forsake. We turn. Father, we bow in your presence tonight. Empty, broken, and unworthy. We need you, Jesus. Our eyes are opened to the fact that we need you more than we have ever needed you before. Hallelujah. Lord, 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 we are filthy, we are wretched and poor and blind. We need your washing, we need your cleansing. Oh, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, we confess to you now our lying our maliciousness, our hatred, our covetousness. Hallelujah. Oh God, our fornications, our adulteries, our rebelliousness, our minglings in witchcraft. Oh good God Almighty, Lamb of God, we confess to you our murders. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not necessarily with sticks and stones and knives and guns, but even with our tongues as we murder one another. We ask you to forgive us tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Cleanse our hearts, O Lamb of God, from all filthiness and sinfulness. Purify our hearts to do your will in the name of Jesus. Break down every idol, cast out every foe, wash us and make us whiter than snow. Father, we stand on this platform, a team of ministers from various locations. Oh, Lamb of God, but help us now not to represent an organization or an assembly, but to stand in your presence as souls needing you. And we stand before this congregation, mighty God. Hallelujah. Believing you, hallelujah, for the igniting of such a revival in our hearts. But help us all to realize, O oh Spirit of the living God, that the revival will not just come by mere declaration, but it will come when we fall prostrate before you, O oh Lamb of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh precious Lord I pray father that even one person will agree with me right now so that you will saturate this atmosphere even before we leave this place tonight in the mighty name of Jesus cause us to leave from here weeping cause us to leave from here crying and mourning O Lamb of God let there be such an overtaking of your power O Lamb of God that we lose control of our very selves in your presence O God Almighty that our will be brought low and your will mighty God will increase in our lives in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus sit on every bishop every pastor every minister every deacon in the name of Jesus sit on every apostle every prophet every evangelist pastor and teacher pray almighty God sit on every brother every sister sit on every musician the keyboardist the drummers the bass guitarist oh hallelujah the organist oh lamb of God sit on every choir member every brother every sister every alto every tenor hallelujah every soprano in the name of Jesus 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 brethren there is a wall that must come down tonight if you have to go you just have to go but I will not stop praying until the wall come down in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah Lord God Almighty let it be tonight in the name of Jesus cleanse our hands from blood hallelujah cleanse our hearts cleanse our minds cleanse our bodies in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus cleanse us from all evil speaking from all bitterness and strife let your name alone be glorified arise oh God let every enemy be scattered in the name of Jesus move on the people to my left move on those in my in the middle move on those to my right move on those in the back in the balcony on the outside in the name of Jesus I pray God you curfew hallelujah the church hall over to my left in the name of Jesus move in the kitchen sanctify this premises Kashata. let there be a Holy Ghost curfew let nobody leave without the fire let nobody leave without the power in the name of Jesus good God break down the idols let the high places come down bring them down in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus yes Lord the hands that are chained Kashedo. the hands that are chained the feet that are shackled we pray you break them loose now in the name of Jesus the minds that are chained oh hallelujah we pray you break them loose now in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah arise oh God let your blood prevail in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm going to ask those in the congregation join hand with the person next to you quickly in the name of Jesus all you gotta do is say in the name of Jesus come on now seal the prayer in the name of Jesus ministers bishops pastors hallelujah I hope you don't mind me calling you brothers and sisters come on join hands together and just say in the name of Jesus hey Shandai hallelujah 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 oh God oh God oh God oh God oh God oh God there is some 
something happening on the outside. I can't see it with my natural eyes, but something is happening on the outside. There's a curfew at every corner of this property. To the east post, Shamaka Sandam, there is a host. To the west, to the north, to the south, the Lord is positioning a Shatai. In the name of Jesus, you can't go through the gate without the power. Katashatama, Ayakashanda. You can't go through the door without the power. In the name of Jesus, somebody lay your hand on the pulpit, lay your hand on the bench, lay your hand on the keyboard, lay your hand on the drums, consecrate them, consecrate them. Somebody, one of you ministers, walk over to the musicians, go lay your hand on each of them. Hakashata, Rakata Shama. Woo. my god work with me work with me there is another dark wall to conquer stop the music for a while stop the music for a while stop the music for a while hallelujah somebody go lay your hands on the musicians when they get anointed then they'll put their hands on the instruments and there is a glory kasha glory that's gonna saturate this house there is another dark wall Hakashanda Hakashetamuhoi hallelujah brother Kleindens where are you ah Kashanda can't open my eyes yes you're right here I feel your hand Koshanda stay right here stay right here Katosha in the name of Jesus one shall chase a thousand two shall put ten thousand to flight in the name of Jesus woman your blood is drying up woman the flow of your blood is drying up no more bleeding hakashaya bleeding haya shata in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now church open up your mouth open up your mouth and say in the name of Jesus shata Shama Hakishana Hallelujah Hallelujah Send the fire Send the fire to your left Send the fire to your right Touch the person beside you Send the fire Send the fire In the name of Jesus after you have gotten this breakthrough tonight you're gonna go your way and sin no more Shia Koshanta Shatama Lamb of God where are the Holy Ghost anointed people throw your hands in the air one more time come on throw your hands from the front to the back Koshanda I said throw your both hands let go your neighbor now and open your mouth with a voice of triumph let there be a shout is there an anointed musician now is there an anointed musician now is there a musician with an anointing to touch the instrument Kashaya, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Hey! Jesus, 
Stand to your feet everywhere we're closing. Jesus. For the angel of the Lord encampeth round and about them that fear him. The anointing is on you. Rashata. Hallelujah. The anointing is in the house. Stand to your feet, raise your hands and shout. Jesus is going to change the atmosphere. Slip your hands up, open your mouth and shout. Jesus. He's trying up cancer. He's trying up cancer. He's trying up diseases. The healer, Jesus. He's in your bedroom, your bathroom. Shout his name. Jesus. 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 Yes. If you, if you have never spoken in tongues before and you are speaking in tongues, raise your hands. You have never spoken in tongues before, but you have spoken in this hand. Just slip your hand up. If you have never spoken in tongues before, but you spoke in the hand, just slip your hand up quickly. Quickly. One hand went up. Is there another person you have never spoken in tongues before? But you spoke in tongues since you came in this house. Raise your hand. Let me see those things. Holy Ghost. Let the church of Holy Ghost. Let the church of Holy Ghost. Let the church of Holy Ghost. The church of Holy Ghost. Yes. There's an earthquake in this house. In the church of Holy Ghost. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth! Jesus! Jesus! Stand and let us close. Stand and let us close. Jesus! 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 Hey! Jesus, we're closing now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Jesus, like the woman of the well, I was seeking for the things that cannot satisfy. But when I heard my blessed Savior say, draw from the well. Somebody said, draw from the well. Somebody said, draw from the well. Somebody said, draw from the well. Bishop Nelson said, draw from the well. Somebody said, draw from the well. Ooh. Let me see the hands of the backsliders that are in this building and you can
Lord, if in the clouds you appear, before we get back here, count us worthy. Count me worthy to be with thee for Christ's sake. Somebody shout amen. The Holy Ghost is on you. But under this anointing, you can go next door and get your refreshment. Some supper should be on the next side. Go by and get some refreshment tomorrow. 8.30. 8.30 we'll be back for some great delivering of the word. We ask you to be out 